So the first individual is named Tef, and I actually found him outside of Discord on some other chatting website. This guy gets really weird, and you'll see what I mean in a second here. I say hi with my age and gender. He says male 19. Then after a bit of chatting, I tell him I have Discord, and he adds me on there. And that's where this whole thing begins. So it starts off with a simple introduction from both of us. He still says the same thing, Tef 19. He asks me what I wanted in the other chat. I tell him a boyfriend. And then he just takes it to a whole new level. Right off the bat, he tells me... I was looking for someone who would maybe want to help me blank off. I hate to break it to you, Tef, but you're not gonna get any women with that, I'm sorry. And then this is where it gets really fucking weird. He tells me that he likes feet, especially the soles. Now listen, I have to confess something. I'm very dedicated, and so I actually sent a picture of my feet. And I said, I made sure to get the lighting right for you. He says, so did I. And then sends me a picture of his meat. I'd also be happy to give you a foot rub. I don't know if that's something you're happy with. It definitely would get me excited. Taff, what are you talking about? Aren't you an adult? I'd give your feet a nice gentle massage. <laughs> I'd make sure to get all your tension out. And then get this. This man sends me a fucking flashbang of a close-up of his meat. At least with the other one, it was far away. This one was right up in the fucking camera. Chill the hell out, Tef. I don't want to look at that. And then shortly after, he asks for a picture of the soles of my feet. I swear if I got to see your soles right now, I'd make such a big blank. And then he sends me yet another fucking flashbang. Now let me tell you something. This is where I got creative. I went into my bedroom and took a few pictures of my soles. And his reaction to this is fucking crazy. I wish I had them in my face right now while I was blank. And I fucking lost it when I read this for the first time. <laughs> Yo, what? He yet again sends me another video of his meat. Then he said he'd make sure to blank me. At this point, I wanted to ask where he lived because I wanted to see if he was literally up to meet this decoy. He says, sadly, I'm in Canada. Where in the US are you? I say I live in Minnesota. And he says he lives in Quebec. And after this, he actually wanted to meet this decoy in Minnesota. And he was actually willing to travel a few states to see me. So then he sends me some really weird shit that I for sure had to blur out. But he was basically saying he would do this while my mom was out in my own house. Then afterwards, he asks me to show him my lovely souls again. I send him another picture and he said, fuck, I'm imagining pressing my nose between the t***s and sniffing at them like a puppy dog. What? Then he says he wishes he was with me right now and he'd get his face buried in my tootsies. Then now this is where he asks to see my taco and I tell him I can't really do that because, you know, it was fucking 3 a.m. and I didn't want to call this guy so I told him tomorrow when we video call, I'll show him. He said that sounds good and then instantly blocks me. So my question is how does this guy go from wanting to travel through a few states to meet this decoy all the way to blocking her instantly? And my response to that is probably post clarity. Now this next Next guy, I actually caught on call with an actual female decoy for the first time ever. And that gets wild, so stay tuned for that. And I told him, hey, with my age and gender, do you have disc? I do, babe. I'm 31. I send him a decoy image saying this is me, and he says that I'm blank AF, babe. Basically another word for beautiful that I'm not gonna be showing. I tell him, can I see you? Yes, baby. Now the ironic part is that he deleted this image right after sending it, but I actually got it downloaded, and this is the image that he sent me. He he calls me babe a lot. He says, thanks, babe. It's okay. We can go slow. And then he says babe again several times. So he thinks it's okay to say this shit despite the decoy's age. I ask him, what do you want to do with me, by the way? And he says, cam fun. What the fuck is that, Michael? I ask, what did you have in mind? Naughty play on cam. That made more sense to me than cam fun. I tell him I'll call him when my family sleeps. And he said, yes, baby. Now, hold on, though. This is fucking weird. I ask him, what is he into? I'm going to blur everything out. But he says, peeing. This man... <laughs> what? I asked him to tell me in detail, and he says, I want to talk to you on cam. So uh, that's what we did, but he did ask to see my taco before. I respectfully declined and said, I'll do it when we video call. Now, the call I had with him was wild. This is how it went. All right, so we're getting ready to call this man. Uh, I'm not excited. Hello? I can't hear you. <laughs> is this guy okay? I love your voice. What did you say? That's fine. camera. I can't, my camera's broken right now. Okay. Bro, his mic is so ass. Hello, is this Michael? You might want to put that away. You mind telling me why a f 
fucking year old man is doing this with <laughs> god damn it oh i can't even say what i just seen but it was fucking disgusting and this guy was scared like if you go back you'll see that he was actually shaking so hard when i caught him now this last individual i'm actually in the middle of talking with he might be the worst out of all of these guys his name is ben and there were so many chat logs just in a few days with this guy that if i printed it it would be about this thick i wish i was joking but in the chat room he said he lives in texas and he wants to find people who live near him to meet up with. I tell him I live in Houston, and he says, hey there, little one. Nice. Sadly, I'm in San Antonio myself. I should have said San Antonio, but I made the excuse that I actually live in Seguin, which is about an hour drive away from him. And I tell him I'm only in Houston for the summer. And then afterwards, we exchange discords, and I, I give him my Discord account. I tell him, hey, I'm Ava. And then let me just put your attention on this. He says, hey there, doll. And throughout this entire conversation, he's been calling me doll. It's just so fucking disturbing to me. Want to see my face? How could I say no to that offer with a winky face? He sends a lot of emojis too. A lot of winks, a lot of uh, tongue out emojis. Basically the type of shit that would give you cancer if you read it. I say here with the decoy images. He says, nice, you look very cute. I'm surprised your parents let you wear so much makeup. I ask him, how do you look? Because I wanted to see what he looked like. And then he sends me a picture that fucking jump scared me. And uh, let me just say, you probably don't want to meet this guy during Christmas because his one inch Grinch is going to fucking ruin it. And then afterwards I get him to send me a photo. I mean, there you have it. I tell him that he's so handsome and that I have a thing for beards. And then afterwards, I ask him how old he is because I was wondering, and he says 34. This guy was actually older than the previous guy, Michael, which is even more disgusting because he actually sent more shit than Michael did. I ask him if he really finds me attractive. He says, more than just attractive, doll. So then he sends me another image of his meat, which fucking killed me. Afterwards, I tell him, do you want to meet up in a week? He tells me, I'm definitely down. We would have to figure out a good time and day just because I work full time. But basically, he asks the decoy if it would be easy to sneak out. Afterwards, he talks about jumping in his car and finding somewhere private. I asked him where would we go, and he talks about a motel being near, and uh, we would enjoy ourselves in the room. So this man was willing to take this girl and kidnap her, essentially, to this motel. And then he sends me another image. He just bombards me with DPs. I tell him I'm gonna go to bed, and he asks for a naughty picture of me before I do so. This morning, he says, good morning, doll and I didn't respond until about 4 p.m. Now basically he tells me at some point tonight I might not be able to talk as much. Have a friend coming over, not a friend that would be okay with me and you talking. No shit. I ask him why just to see if he's self-aware and he says because of the age gap. Not everyone is okay with it like we are. You know Ben take this with a grain of salt but I'm pretty sure the law isn't okay with that either. And he says well what matters is how we feel about each other and it's our private thing. I say I'll miss him and I want another picture of him. Then he sends me another image where he's supposedly at work. And then he says, you're so adorable doll. Can't wait to see my cutie with less blank on. Meet Jimmy, also known as Dimitri. He is 50 years old and of Greek descent. And you're about to realize he has a thing for teenagers. Now, I initially found this man through a public online chatting room under the name Jim. He shoots me a private message and says, Hello, nice to meet you. Hi, I responded. My name is Jimmy from Greece, Europe. I'm 6'1", 148 pounds. And then we exchanged discords. After some time, I received a friend request from a user named Azriel. I accepted and said the following. Hi, how old are you? I want to start this conversation off with knowing each other's ages so he can be held accountable for his actions. Hello, I'm 50. Is that okay with you? Of course, I like older men. Then I asked him what he looks like. And then he sends me an image of himself. This is our suspect. Now the decoy gives a rather cliche response to this and says, You have such a nice body and you're really handsome. Thank you so much, sweetheart. What do you look like? And then I send him fake images of an adult decoy to which he replies, You look so so gorgeous. You've got such a lovely face. Afterwards, he says, wish I was your boyfriend. Then I tell him I'm single and my name's Kayla. Princess Kayla. He responds, uh, I'm no princess, but you're definitely my prince. This is an ongoing theme that we sort of say to each other throughout our conversations. Later on, he says he feels lucky to have met me and says, you are my sweet angel and I love you so much with a plethora of emojis. It's crazy how only 15 minutes have passed and he's already this madly in love. And just when you thought that this couldn't get any creepier, this man decided to send me very questionable voice messages that I'll play now. Love you so much, my beautiful princess. 
His voice sort of reminds me of Smeagol from Lord of the Rings, except I was his precious. He also sent voice messages of him speaking in Greek that were translated to some very inappropriate things. He tells me I want to hug you tight and kiss you on your sweet lips, to which I responded, Stop. The way you speak to me touches my heart, even if I don't speak Greek. I think it's safe to say that this man wanted a taste of this decoy. It was at this moment that Dimitri turned this conversation from creepy to downright illegal. And I knew that only one wrong text could destroy our chances at getting this man in trouble with the law. Now, this is where the illegal aspect takes place. He sends me an image of his bulge, but covered up, to which he says, I'm sorry, I just feel so excited to be with you, and that has caused that. Why are you sorry, Demi? That's my nickname for you, by the way. And this tactic of using nicknames was used to create an even deeper emotional connection. Now, we all saw this coming, but it wasn't long before before he sent an image of his meat completely exposed. I ask him, why are you showing me? Hmm, cause I'm so big and blank now. Cause of you, my hottie. And then he mentions the decoy's hands and lips on it, and that it's going to go into the decoy's kitty, as he calls it. He even says that he's going to make love to me and that he's blanking it slowly as we're chatting. And then after he sends me a rather hairy photo of it, again, while standing up, and the caption is just as creepy. Oh, Kayla, want you so much, baby. And then he started giving the decoy a tutorial on self-pleasure. It, it just seems like he's grooming at this point. Unfortunately, the time has come where he had asked me to send him a voice message too, and I didn't know what to do. If I mess this up, he's going to know I'm faking this whole thing, and it'll ruin the entire sting operation. And although it's not reliable, I decided to use an AI girl voice changer. This is the result that I I'm sending him. Hey, dearie, sorry, my mom is being difficult. I had prayed that this was enough to fool him into thinking that I was an actual teenage girl. He responds, oh gosh, it had actually worked. I guess all of my experience really paid off here because this is usually the part where the creep loses interest. And then we call it night, to which he says, billion sweet kisses for my gorgeous girlfriend, Kayla. And this is proof that by the end of that first day, he had already considered me a romantic partner. Mission accomplished, but there's far more that we have to do. This is only the beginning. Oh, you thought I wasn't going to go on with this? Well, here on the Duckus channel, we are very dedicated to our work, so the catching continues. In fact, today was even worse than yesterday. Now he wakes up and instantly spams my message with texts expressing his love for the decoy. Now this took place on a Thursday, roughly in the middle of August when school had already started. So I used that as an excuse and said, Hi Demi, sorry, I was at school, I missed you. And then he responded lightning fast. Baby, with a lot of kissing emojis, missed you too, so much. Then we were having a conversation about his job. He says he works in a hotel as a storekeeper. I responded, Really? I've always wanted to stay at a hotel. You will stay with me wherever I am staying, in the hotel at the moment, he said. And then afterwards he sends me an image of his face with some of the worst camera quality I think I've ever seen. I gave him a few cliche compliments and he responds with, Oh baby, my heart is melting for you. You're so unique, unbelievable, stunning. I don't know. I'm losing my words when we're chatting. Well, Dimitri, it's unfortunate for you that instead of talking to a teenage girl, you're talking to me. And then he sends me voice messages that really disturbed me, to which I will play now. Baby, love you so much and much, 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 much more. You are so pretty and hot, my angel. Want you so bad. He then asks for what I'm wearing. I tell him a crop top with some jean shorts. He then starts drooling all over the decoy and sends an image of him shirtless. And then another explicit image that I have to blur out. And right before sending me his meat, he sent two more voice messages. Love you more day by day, my angel. You are so fucking 
told you. And this man went wild. He sent me three images of his meat. And he even goes as far as to say that he's going to blank for me. Afterwards, we yet again call it a night and he claims to wash his meat before bed, meaning he did it to the decoy. I don't even have any words for how disgusting this is. At this point in time, I wanted to take this investigation up a notch and incriminate this man even more. So, I decided to call him in real time to see how exactly he would talk to this underage decoy out loud. Now, how will I accomplish this, you might ask, considering my voice isn't very feminine? Well, let me show you. I'm going to be using an AI girl voice changer, the same one that I had used earlier to send him that voice message. Now the downside, that voice message took about five takes to get right, so there's a lot of room for error when it comes to this voice changer. This is just an example of how glitchy this can be. This will be the ultimate test to prove to Dimitri that I am authentic despite it being pretty risky. This is how the call started off and you tell me if I sound convincing. How was your day? My day was good. I really missed you, Demi. This is the first time we were actually able to talk. Ah, uh, indeed. <laughs> I love your voice, Demi. I love your voice, too. Now, I tried to make it obvious to this man that the decoy was in fact still a teenager, so I mentioned my mom and school quite a bit. But even if I hadn't, this man knows my age and knew it for a long time, so there's really no defending him. My mom's currently in, like, the kitchen cooking, so this is, like, a perfect time for me to call you. I always have to hide that I'm on a device. And then he started getting weird. Can you tell me what are you wearing? Now, I wanna imagine of you. All right, I'm wearing a, um, well, I don't know what to call it. It's like, it's not a crop top, but it's like what you put under, like an undershirt, because I'm at home and it's cozy, and like a mini skirt. Mmm, sounds really hot. I bet that you look so sexy. And if you think that was weird, well, it's about to get a lot worse. As long as we are talking now, I'm f***ing myself it is huge right now i just wish you were here i wish i was there too mm. oh fuck. i think that i'm gonna come. wait what demi you can't say things like that mm. yeah it's really great to listen to your voice i wanna kiss you everywhere all over your face and body you are gorgeous. Now we're reaching towards the end of the call, and this is how it went. I have to go. Bye, my angel. Love you so much, Kayla. Bye. I love you more. And with that, I can fully say with confidence that this man was 100% convinced that I was who I pretended to be. And now, it's time to face the hardest part of this investigation, contacting law enforcement. Now, why is this so challenging? Because the suspect is in Greece, so I have to contact his local police. And if you didn't know, I'm located in the United States, and I don't speak Greek, so there might be a language barrier and an issue with the time difference. However, that won't stop us from trying. But before I could do anything, I had to get his last name and his city, which wasn't really a problem. I was able to get him to tell me his city in a previous call. I've always wondered what part of Greece are you from? And I was able to get his last name by tricking him into thinking it was for a ship name between him and the decoy. This was all about a month into the relationship, so he wasn't very suspicious when I asked him these questions. Now, I had all the information I needed to contact a police department in his local town, and this is how it went. Uh, hello, uh, is there an English speaker I can speak to? Yes. I'd like to report somebody. They ended the call. W what am I supposed to do? <laughs> now, although the pre-recorded message asked me if I speak English before I was transferred, the person on the phone just hung up on me for absolutely no reason when I asked to file the report. But of course, I couldn't stop there, so I decided to call another police department in his hometown. <laughs> I need to report somebody. Mister, I am only here. Where are you? Here in a I'm not in 
but I, I'd like to report somebody who- uh, Okay, he called- he hung up on me. Now, it appears that the incompetence of the police where Dimitri lives is absolutely ridiculous. So, I decided to call the tourist police in the entire nation of Greece to try to report him there. And they just told me I had to talk to their cybercrime unit. So, I dialed the number and this is how it went. Uh, I'd like to report an individual who has been talking and explicitly with uh, who they believe is th Yes, and uh, what makes you think that someone from Greece? Uh, because he told me that he's from Greece. He had it in his profile and he also told me specifically. Uh, I have his name, his last name, his picture, his location. I have all information on him. Okay, and you have access to the dialogues? I do. I have di I have the dialogues. I have all the evidence. I have screenshots. I have voice messages as well where he shows his voice. And this is the part when I was finally told where to make the report, which would include all of the evidence. You can send us an email, okay? Say that, listen, I've got all of this info regarding an individual in Greece. Uh, he did this, 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 this is the info. These are the screenshots of the uh, conversation between, uh, uh, was he talking with a mother? Yes. Okay, uh, let me know if you, can, if you need anything else. And then I used the email they provided over the phone to make a lengthy report about the individual, Dimitri. It included his general information as well as the pictures he sent me. I also attached a PDF file which included every single part of our message logs. And with that, the investigation is now in the hands of the law. But there's still one thing we have to do. You see, we always confront our suspects, and Dimitri is no different. It's crazy to think that this investigation has gone on for almost two months, so he's completely convinced that I'm legit. Which means this call definitely had more weight than any confrontation I have ever done before. I really, really, really wish you were here. I wish that as well. Hopefully you are going to be ungrounded soon. Hello, Dimitri. You do realize it's illegal to have a s relationship with a m correct? I've already reported you to the police. They have everything on you. Is there anything you'd like to say? Of course he leaves. And with that, our long relationship with 50-year-old Dimitri has come to an end. What's funny is he immediately left call and blocked me before I could even message him. I guess the two months we've been talking wasn't enough to prevent him from doing exactly what everyone else does. At first, I was actually expecting him to stay and ask questions, but to no one's surprise, he knew exactly what he was doing the entire time. So of course he's just going to leave once he knows he's been caught.